Hey guys, I'm gonna have a lot of videos in the future on beginner guides to Minecraft speedrunning, so if you want to see more of those, like and subscribe. So the first thing we use is the sea level. Here in this cave, I'm able to find another cave by looking at where it spikes up. Here it's only at 4, but as I look over here, it's 50. And through here is another cave. This also works at the surface. Right now it's only 18. But as I run over here, 60, 70, lower my FOV, there's 40 over here, and there's a cave. Sometimes in the nether you can be unsure which way to go. Here we've got a left turn and a right turn. If I drop my FOV, over here is 900, but over here is only 500. Looking at the 900, the nether opens up a lot. But over where it was only 500, the nether is very closed. The second sea level here, after the slash, is the current loaded chunks. One of the untimed pauses in Minecraft speedrunning is dimension loading, which is basically letting the world load in. So as I enter the nether, I'm going to pause and wait for this to stop changing. When it stopped changing, I know all of the chunks have loaded. The first E level here is the total number of entities in our field of view. We use this for a thing called microlensing, which is basically looking for bastions through walls. So if I look over here, the E is only around 8, but as I look over here, it spikes up to 50, which means it's very likely there's a bastion over here. If you want to learn more about this, I'll leave a link in the description to a video about it. The second E number is mostly useful for knowing how many bastions are in the nether. Again, this is covered in one of my videos in the description about microlensing. But basically, if you add M and C to the right of SC and compare that to the second E number at the top left, for every 30 to 60 entities, there should be one bastion. The number of entities per bastion varies, as Bridge has only around 30 entities, whereas Stables can have up to 70. If there are no bastions in the nether, it's just worth resetting. The second E number is the total number of entities loaded in the world, but is also used when dropping render to spawn in more mobs close to us. So if I drop render down to 2, it's going to drop all the way down but it slowly spawns in more mobs again. Coordinates are generally used a lot in speedruns, but one of the most important ways we use coordinates is nether regions. Basically, there can only be one nether structure per region. So I'm in a bastion that's in negative x, positive z, so if I want to find a fortress, I know there can't be one in negative x positive z. So from here, it's best that I either go positive x or negative z here to find a fortress. Coordinates are also used when blind traveling. Strongholds can only generate in certain rings in the overworld, and in the nether, those coordinates are divided by 8. So when runners are ready to blind travel, they make sure their portal is going to be within one of the stronghold rings. Chunk coordinates are super important in speedruns. Here you can see the eye of ender points to exactly 8-8 in the chunk. This can be useful for triangulation, basically finding the stronghold. Once we're in the stronghold chunk, we can go to 4-4, which is the exact coordinate that the stronghold staircase always generates. So it can fall perfectly down the middle. When finding buried treasure, the chest for buried treasure always generates at 9-9 nine, nine in the chunk. So if I align myself up on 9 and 9, These other chunk coordinates are for knowing if animals spawned in the 0, zero chunk. Since these polar bears spawn at 0, zero, we know the angle of the stronghold and also the distance. If you want to learn more about that, I'll have another link to a video in the description.
There's another technique called distance estimation, which basically gives us the distance of the stronghold. So here if I get a first angle at 48.8, if I turn 90 degrees to my right, sprint jump four times and add on a little more, if I throw another eye and get the second angle, we get 47.8. And the distance of the stronghold is 1000 divided by whatever the angle changed by. So this angle changed by 1. 1000 divided by 1 is 1000. So this stronghold should be around 1000 blocks away. The O level here is the highest block on your coordinate that's non liquid. This is used for digging up if you blind travel or somehow end up at the bottom of the world. Right now, the O level is 93. So we can expect that. At the very top of this, it'll be a really tall mountain. But if I run around in this cave a little more and wait for it to drop all the way down, here it's only 53. So if I were to dig up here, it'd take a lot less time than digging up over where it was 90. Targeted block is used mostly for divine travel. When using fossils for divine travel, the x coordinate of the starting block of the fossil is the number that gives us the angle of the stronghold. In Ocean Runs, one of the objectives is to find a magma ravine. By using F3 and B, we can enable hitboxes, which makes kelp very visible from a distance. Kelp often indicates a magma ravine, because when a ravine generates, it removes all of the blocks underneath the gravel that supports the kelp. So when those blocks are removed by the ravine, the kelp floats to the surface. Chunk borders are enabled with F3 and G. Chunk borders are useful for a lot of complicated tech, but basically it just makes it easier to understand what chunk you're in in the moment. Something else runners use with F3 is the pie chart, which is opened with Shift and F3. I'll leave a link to a video in the description on how to find fortresses with the pie chart, but we're also able to find things like buried treasure and blacksmiths with it as well. Finding buried treasure with a pie chart is very complicated, so again I'll have to leave another link to a video in the description on how to find buried treasure with the pie chart. But the basics of it is, all of the options shown in the bottom right with a number to the left, you can press that number on your keyboard and it'll open that menu. And to go back a menu you press 0. To find buried treasure, basically we drop to 5 render distance, Go to Game Renderer, Level, Entities, open Chunk Borders, refresh the pie, and we slowly turn around until the right side number to the right of Block Entities spikes up. So facing here, it's only 0.07. But as I move to the right, it spikes up past 0.5%. Then with some other techniques, we're able to find out exactly what chunk the buried treasure is in. And then again, we look at look for 99. And there's the buried treasure. Again, if you want to learn how to do this technique, I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Here in a village, I have the pie chart open. As you can see, there's a Minecraft furnace in the village. In plains villages and desert villages, furnaces can only generate in blacksmiths. So if there's a furnace when you're near a plains village or desert village, there's definitely going to be a blacksmith. The pie chart is also used to know if the nether is worth playing. Going into tick, level, entities, and block entities, a mob spawner can only generate in either a fortress or a treasure bastion. Although we can get false positives from treasure bastions, if there are no mob spawners at all in our nether, there's definitely no fortress, so we can reset off of that as well. These are just some of the uses of F3 that we use in speedruns. There are a lot more uses and a lot of complicated techniques that I'll leave links in the description to. Thanks again for watching. Let me know if there's any other guides you'd like me to make.